There was once a land hidden between layers of wood, grains, and magic. In a land of such beauty, there were hidden many things, from strange little animals, trees of the oddest of shapes, and herbs with such powerful effects you would not even dare to dream of. This world, well, exists alongside the land you live in. It is called, in our own world, the Realm of Fae. And your land, in our world, is called the Mortal Realm. Although we live on the same plane of existence, our lives, cultures, and traditions are, for the most part, unknown to each other. And unfortunately, there is a good reason as to why that is. Over 2,000 years ago, life between our peoples, you know, it was nice. Um, it was peaceful. It was prosperous. Although we were different in appearance, we would do our best to respect each other and help in whatever way we could. As... It usually happens during those times, things were a lot harder than they are now. Back then, luckily, everyone in your realm used to have such beautiful, gentle souls, but nowadays, such humans are very, very It is a tale of way, way long ago. But you may ask me now of the things that happened which disrupted our harmonious lives. That, my dear friends, is one of the hardest stories to tell. And unfortunately, is an even harder story to listen to. So, instead of telling you everything from the get-go, I shall tell you tidbits of the story that unfolded. So you and anyone else willing to listen can understand our history. One day, during a time long forgotten by many, lived the Prince of the Human Kingdom, or as his subjects addressed him, the son of our nation. <laughs> he was a beautiful man, way more beautiful than most men and even most women. He was, for the lack of a better term, quite magical to say the least. The prince had a very cheerful personality. He would always try to help his servants with their chores, which was a uh, very strange behavior not seen in many of the royals before him. He would always try his best to look as presentable as possible, but not out of duty, but because he loved knowing that he did his best in regards to his outer appearance. He was quite the charmer too. Many of the court ladies would swoon over him, trying their absolute best to win his favor. In, well, many ways, actually. Both elegant and unorthodox. However, each attempt has failed, as our prince never had eyes for any of the maidens at the court. Not because they were not beautiful, Far from it, actually. The human court had the finest of beauties in the entire land, only rivaled by the Fae, of course. However, he fancied the man of the court much more. His parents, king and queen, for 20 years already at that point, were as peculiar as their son. They never really cared about royal customs and encouraged their child to follow his heart, and if his heart decided to be with another man, it was all good in their eyes. There were, however, voices inside the royal palace that frowned upon such an approach, 
mainly the elders of the royal clan, who, much like an old door who has not seen oil in decades, were immovable in their convictions regarding the crown prince and his family. There were many attempts of swaying the king and the queen to their side, but the loving parents of the crown prince were standing their ground with, as most people would call it, the love only a parent could feel for someone else. Unfortunately, that caused quite a few problems for the loving pair, from officials refusing to work or, you know, to some small-sized rebellions. However, those that were loyal to their family were much more abundant in numbers, so the problems were quickly resolved. Not even for a second did the royals decide to backstab and control their son's life, and for that, he has been eternally grateful and did his absolute best to honor them everywhere he went. During the Queen's 45th anniversary, there was the most beautiful and glamorous banquet to be prepared, with the finest of foods, the silkiest of silks, and the most talented performers the world has ever seen. Although she loved her people dearly, and would consistently hold charity events to help those in need, she always thought that such a celebration was far too elaborate for her taste, if she could just spend her birthday with her adoring husband and the light of her eyes, her son, she would be the happiest woman alive. However, she understood fairly quickly that her people are also part of her family, and it would be unwise and rather rude to shove them aside. After all, without them, she would not be the queen of the human realm, but merely an ordinary woman. Even if, just for a few moments, at specific intervals of time, she would want nothing more than to just be a normal woman. Of course, she would never admit that in front of anyone but her husband. Due to his loving nature and respect he held for his mother, Crown Prince Morven, with the help of a few faithful servants, decided to be the one to prepare his mother's favorite birthday cake. As previously stated, she was not a very complicated woman, although her status may suggest otherwise. Therefore, instead of the most luxurious cakes the world has ever seen that had been brought by the staff at the palace, our prince decided to prepare his mother's favorite cake. A simple, yet very delicious chocolate and hazelnut one. Although he had no prior experience in baking, his drive to impress his mother has certainly motivated him well enough to succeed in making this delicious treat. And succeed he has, to the dismay of all the staff in the royal kitchens. Of course, he would not serve this to his mother before tasting it, as he would not want her to dislike the cake he so lovingly made. So, the prince took the tiniest of pieces, one nobody could see was even gone, and gave it a test. Hmm. It was, as expected, the best piece he has ever eaten, and it would surely become his signature dish in the years to come. As more and more people gathered in front of the queen, human and fae alike, anybody would have thought that nothing could have gone wrong at this moment. <sighs> A pity that it was so far from the truth. While the guests came personally to the queen's side in order to hand in their gifts, one particular individual, a man with dark brown eyes and a mysterious aura, approached Her Majesty and her son, who stayed by the woman's side constantly. While the woman seemed to be unaware of the stranger's bizarre presence, 
Crown Prince Morven sensed something was not quite right. As he eyed the men suspiciously, he spotted a few other men scattered around the place, all with the same mysterious aura. Realizing what was potentially about to happen, Morven grabbed his mother's hand, but before being able to utter his next words, the man drew a silver dagger from his pocket and aimed for the prince's throat. The queen, however, having previous experience in combat, as her father urged her to learn, quickly parried the man's dagger with her own, which was hidden under her bosom for nobody but herself to know. Morven was no damsel in distress either and jumped in to help his mother, but she pushed him aside and told him to run, knowing that everything will be all right. His mother probably had a plan and he ran as fast as he could, avoiding the other conspirators to the best of his abilities. As the fight raged on, Crown Prince Morven could not find any safe haven inside the royal palace in order to hide. Thus, he decided to venture into the Fey Forest where most mortals would not even dare to look, let alone enter. It seemed like the safest choice he had, or more like the only choice he had. The young man bolted out of the royal garrison and took it straight to the left, the entrance of the forest being quite visible even from afar. One of the attackers, however, saw the prince make a run for it and decided to follow the sole son of the human nation, as he was one of the few surviving members of their conspiracy, and they had to succeed. Because Morven didn't see him, he knew nothing of the looming danger that came rapidly behind him, hence why he entered the world of the Fae unaware that he did not fully manage to escape the conspirator's grasp just yet. Maybe, just maybe, the magical world of the Fae will prove to be his savior and he will be able to return to his mother's side sooner rather than later. <laughs>